I have this lightweight outfeed and assembly table that I would like to have some better work holding capabilities. The table is lightweight because in the winter I store it on top of my table saw so we can park the car in the garage when we're expecting a big dumping of snow. I always knew I needed and wanted some sort of ice, but now that I'm filming myself, I really see just how much I struggle to clamp down work pieces when doing even basic tasks. I saw this design about seven years ago by Jay Bates and thought it was a great idea. I'm beginning by screwing on a scrap piece of 2x10 that I cleaned up with the planer. It's going to give me some additional support and I made sure to screw it into the legs and the existing apron. The table is built with glued half lap joints with some screws for reinforcement. It's fairly sturdy for a lightweight table that uses an old door as a top. I'm drilling some 1 and 3 16 inch holes to hold the 3 quarter inch pipe, which has an exterior diameter of about 1 inch. The extra space gives you some slop when you need to adjust the pipes or clamp something tapered. I'm also spacing the holes 26 inches apart, center to center, so that way I can fit a 24 inch cabinet part in between them. Now, it's just a matter of screwing the sport into your bench and drilling the holes the rest of the way through. I'm putting two small holes in the back of the pipe clamps to hold them onto the back of the apron. These screws won't be under any stress, they just hold the clamps in place. I'm using 3 quarter inch clamps because I had a ton line around and the only thing I had to buy was a 36 inch piece of pipe. Half inch clamps would work perfectly fine. Now I'm cutting my 36 inch pipe in half and sliding them onto the clamps and then through the holes I just drilled. I used a couple pan head or pocket screws to connect these. If you don't have any pipe clamps kicking around, they aren't very expensive to buy new, or you can usually find tons on the used market for cheap. I'll put a link in the description showing a similar style to what I used. Now that your pipes are set, we can mark the location on our front jaw for the holes. Instead of measuring, I'm lying the jaw on top of the pipes in the correct position and extending the left and right sides of the pipe up the jaw. Now hold the jaw in place and eyeball the center of the pipes for the vertical position. I'm holding the jaw just a little high so it actually sits about a quarter inch above the top of the table. Drill the holes and install the jaw. Mark a line on the back side of the jaw and trim the excess off with the tool of your choice. Here you can see that I made a bit of a mistake and put my pipes too low. While the vise still works, if I'm clamping small material near the top of the vise, my jaw ends up more skewed than I would like. I would suggest drilling your pipe hole so the clamp can be as high as possible up the table without it actually protruding past the top of the table. And through some movie magic, you can see my pipes have moved to the correct position. The vise now works as it should. Now let's work on a very simple and lightweight sliding dead bend so that we can support some longer and wider work pieces. There are many videos on YouTube about a more traditional way to make these, but I'm just rigging something up for this light outfit table. I've begun by removing my original lower stretcher and installing a couple spacers or support blocks at the bottom of the legs. I've cut a new stretcher out of solid wood that is the same thickness as my leg. With my table saw set at 45 degrees, I'm ripping this angle along both sides of my new stretcher and leaving just a bit of a flat spot on the top. You don't need it to come to a sharp point as this will just add more resistance later. Next I'm cutting a mating angle on the bottom of what will be my sliding dead men using a sled that I use specifically with the angled blade. I'm raising the blade slowly and sneaking up on that center point that I marked. You can use your miter gauge or even a miter saw that bevels for this operation. I would also suggest using wider stock of at least 9 inches. My 3 inch sliding dead men is too tippy but it is what I had on hand. With my new angled stretcher installed below, I'm positioning the sliding dead men to determine what length I need to cut it to. Once that's cut, I'm going to create a small rabbit on the top of the piece. Traditionally, this rabbit would then slide into a groove that you cut on the underside of your bench top. I'm cheating the system and cutting a maiden rabbit on a cleat that I will screw into place instead. Simply use the rabbit you cut on the sliding dead man to mark where the rabbit should be cut in the cleat that you're going to make. You don't want too tight of a fit as you want the sliding dead man to be able to move around, but you also don't want it so loose that it pops out of position. With these parts cut, we can simply screw the first cleat into place on that 2x10 we installed at the beginning of the video. This is the reason we put such a wide board even though we could have gone away with something less deep. 
You can see that the cleat is positioned with the groove on the back so that the sliding deadman now is locked into place between our angled stretcher and our slot above. Without looking good, I'm going to drill my holes in the sliding deadman. Again, traditionally these holes are 3 quarters of an inch and made to accept a whole host of bench dogs, hold fasts, or other commercially available accessories. I would suggest you drill your holes that size to accommodate any of those items if you want to use them. But I don't own any of those. What I do own is a whole bunch of half inch dowel and on my lightweight bench that is going to work just fine. I've drilled a number of half inch holes down my dead men and I'll show you how those are going to work in a bit. There's one more thing I want to add to this bench. I've marked a line that is directly in line with the top of my pipes. I'm going to set my doweling jig so I can drill half inch holes that also line up with the same line. This honestly doesn't need to be perfect and you could just do this by eye. Again, if you want to use commercially available hold faster bench dogs, drill 3 quarter inch holes here or whatever size is required for the product that you want to use. You can see I put a couple holes both in between the pipes as well as to the far right side of the pipes. I'll show you how I use these later on. With all that done, insert the sliding dead men into its slot. Next, install the second cleat to complete the slot and cap off the sliding rail. Finally, it's showtime. It's probably pretty obvious how to use the vise with the jaw, but I'm going to show you a couple other options with these other supports we added and the sliding dead men. First, we can actually remove the jaw totally if we want to clamp a large panel to the bench. You can position the dead men near the end of the panel and put a dowel so that the panel is at a comfortable working height. Then, with just one clamp installed, we can clamp the panel in place. This is sort of a low budget leg vise setup. I'm not sure how well it would work for heavy planing, but it will work great for edge banding, sanding, or drilling operations on the edge of a panel. With the jaw reinstalled, it's easy to see how we can clamp smaller panels in between the two pipes. If you're working on parts that are all the same size, and you're performing repetitive tasks on the same edge, the dead men can come in handy for acting as a positive stop. The first step would be insert one panel and set everything up so that the dead man and the clamps are positioned where they need to be. Then, with that set up, it's going to be super easy to remove a panel, install a new one, do your work, remove it, install a new one, do your work, you get it. Finally, you can see here if you need to work on a panel that is shorter than the distance between your pipes, it may want to fall through while you're setting up. This is where our half inch holes along the top edge come in handy. You can toss a dowel in there and now you have a quick support to hold your workpiece while you tighten up the clamp. The moment of truth has arrived. Can I still get this bench up on top of the table saw or do I need to work harder at the gym? Well. I can't say that it looked too smooth on video, but it's more than doable. Thanks for watching, and if you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments and I'll do my best to get back to you. Cheers.